already bad quality. Let's improve it as much as we can. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Sorry about the aesthetic aesthetics. Aesthetics, is that the word? The visuals. You know what I mean? Like the way I look and the background. But you know, there's plenty of YouTubers with a perfect background and then look perfect all the time so if you want to go and watch them feel free yeah i just thought we would have a maybe sort that out a bit though i just thought we'd do a little roundup of the year and it is safe to say it's probably been one of the worst of my life <laughs> um i mean i have to laugh as i'll cry but this isn't the type of video which I'm just get comfortable. This isn't the type of video where it's gonna be like oh, I've had the best year and everything's gone perfect and we've achieved so much. This is just not that video. So if you're looking for that video, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but that is just not that. But I feel like these videos are good to look back on to see how far you've come hopefully maybe i don't know it's so like i'll watch this back next year maybe and be like okay it, at least that year wasn't as bad as the last you know so as i say this year it hasn't been the best um in fact it hasn't even just been average it's been horrific so i started this year i've even got the tweet and i was like i remember literally writing loads everything i was going to plan to do um and i just started the year so so positive um thinking i was just going to get my life sorted everything on track i was going to start saving <laughs> and it just all went downhill from there really so as i say yeah we started in january January wasn't too bad, mm, wasn't the best, but wasn't too bad. Then we got into February, and um, yeah, it was kind of around February time that I started to have symptoms of illness. So I was going to work and. I was bleeding non-stop, I was being sick, um, literally just feeling horrendous. Every day I'd go into work and they'd try and send me home, but I was just ignoring it and I was like, no, 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 I'm fine, I need to work, I need to save my money, um, I'm fine basically. So I ignored it, I ignored it, I ignored it, and then it came around to April and I was I mean, this is a bit, a lot of information, but you know, um, some people may be wondering what has been going on for me. So yeah, it got to April and I can honestly say it is the illest I have ever been in my entire life, ever, literally ever. I So from January to April, I just spent every day crying and being sick and bleeding and being sent home from work just not being able to do anything really and then yeah roll on to april i was just ignoring it everything and then i was that bad one day at work that they said if you don't go to a and e we're going to stop paying you every time you come into work so you'll be coming here for no reason and they was just like you need to go you need to go to a and &E. and i was like no 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 i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine i was not fine so anyway i plucked up the courage and went to a and &E from work and it was on a bank holiday weekend and now i've never heard of this but they was like because it's bank holiday we can't actually see you right now or we they saw me sorry but they didn't like properly examine me they they just i don't know just kind of not brushed me off but 
it's not the best hospital let's just say that so anyway i went home i told them i've been to a and &E and i was like yeah they said i was fine the next day i had 28 missed calls from the hospital um safe to say i ignored every single one because i was just in denial that there was something wrong with me and that weekend i that Friday, so this was on, I think it was Monday, I had the 28 missed calls or Tuesday, and then on the Friday I was going on holiday, so I was like, I'm just going to go on holiday, you know, it'll all blow over when I'm on holiday, don't know what I was thinking, honestly, I don't know what I was thinking, I was obviously just stupid, um, so yeah, I thought it would all blow over after holiday, boy was I wrong, so I went on holiday and, no, I'm really sorry, I didn't go on holiday. On the Thursday, I went into hospital because my, by this point, I did, hadn't told none of my family because I didn't want them to stress, the only people that knew were the people at work. Um, but on the Wednesday, I told my dad kind of what was going on and he made me go into the hospital on Thursday. And they said to me, we need to operate on you like now and I was like what uh sorry what um and they said like we've had all the scans back and the blood tests and you need to go to surgery this second like we'll get the surgeon ready we'll get everything ready and we'll send you down to surgery and I was like whoa 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 I'm meant to be going on holiday tomorrow now this is stupid please don't no, my mistake <laughs> because it might have meant I'm not in this mess still now but I was like, I'm going on holiday tomorrow. No. And my dad was like, are you serious? But obviously the hospital have to do what you say. Um, they can't like, force you to have an operation. So I ignored her advice. And I had to sign this form to say, yeah, I don't care if anything happens to me. They gave me this letter to take if I got really bad to take to the hospital near where I was going on holiday. And... I think that was probably the worst mistake I've ever made in my life was going on that holiday because I was so ill to the point where I was being sick maybe every half an hour. Um, I, could, I didn't eat or drink a thing. So I was so dehydrated and weak. Um, honestly, I was just, my belly was in agony got the pain but anyway i lasted the whole holiday not really something to be proud of because i was just stupid but i lasted the whole holiday and drove straight from the holiday my dad drove me straight to hospital i couldn't even walk in the hospital um i remember literally like collapsing on the car park in the hospital because i was so tired and weak um and yeah they put me straight in the bed i didn't go to like a and e i went straight to like a ward um and they prepped me for surgery like instantly as soon as i got there um so i think it was within like a couple of hours my surgeon come to see see me to sign all my documents at this point bearing in mind i had no idea still what was going on like, no idea. The doctor kind of explained to me, but I was just so confused. I had, didn't understand what was happening. I didn't understand why I was feeling the way I did. Um, I just didn't get it. And I deal with things in the way that you should block it out. So I was just blocking everything out. I didn't want to know what was going on, to be honest. Um, and obviously the reason I was feeling so weak was because when I say I was bleeding from yeah um i was bleeding to the point where i would literally have to sit on the toilet um and i couldn't get off the toilet and wear like a pad because i would put the pad on instantly it would soak through all to my trousers it was literally like a waterfall or like i was having a wee that's how i described it to the doctors i was like it's like i'm having a wee um and if you know, once you lose that much blood, your body just is so weak. Um, you literally can't do anything. So 
yeah they was worried i was gonna like lose too much blood and everything so anyway they sent me down to surgery i had surgery um to remove whatever they'd found again at this point didn't ask no questions i was just like yeah yeah do your own thing i couldn't even speak to honest. i remember i was lying on the bed like i was too weak to even cry so i couldn't hear what they were saying i couldn't ask no questions i was just like I remember I couldn't even sign my paper because you have to sign um, a piece of paper before you go down to surgery. Um, and I just had to get my dad to like forge my signature because I was too weak to even sign the piece of paper. And then, so then rolling on, I come out of surgery. I was in hospital for, I think it was like five days. And I had two blood transfusions during that because of how much blood I was losing or had lost. So I had surgery, I had two blood transfusions and they said, we're going to send whatever we've took out of you away for testing and we will get back to you. And if you've been to the hospital, you think, or you know, or you presume, no news is good news. So I come out of hospital, um, I was still bleeding, but I just thought, oh, man, it's just normal. So I was just like, no news is good news. And they just didn't ring me, didn't ring me, didn't ring me. Um... And then, oh yeah, and then it got to the point where it had been, so then it got to the point, and I think it was around June, maybe June, and I was still bleeding, so from April when I had my surgery up until June, I was still bleeding um, every single day, so I went back to the hospital and I said, oh, what's going on, is this normal, and they said, yeah it's completely normal if you think something's not right please don't listen to the doctors and get a second opinion because i went to the hospital one day i can't remember what day it was i went to the hospital one day and told them everything that was going on and said like this is still happening is this normal bearing in mind they hadn't called me back from my operation and anything like that um blah 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 and she was like yeah yeah it's normal she had no clue can i just add she had no idea what was actually going on no she knew what was going on she knew who i was like she was there when i was in hospital but with the most respect to her she didn't know um, because then the next day, literally, so the day after I'd been to hospital, saying, you need to drive to London, I live in Birmingham, today um, to start chemotherapy. I was like, huh? Sorry, what? Um, bearing in mind, I thought I was fine. The, the day before, I got told by this nurse I was fine. Um, bearing in mind, my dad was on holiday, and Jack and Henry were both flying out the next day, to go on holiday so i was like alone and i was like sorry what drive down to london and they were like you pack a bag for a week because you're going to be staying here for a week and i just broke down to be honest with you i don't even know a better way of saying it other than that i just i feel like i could cry think about it but i'm not because i'm over it now but it was just the scariest time of my life the scariest i can't even tell you what i was feeling at that time um it was just horrible uh the fact that I was scared that I didn't have my dad there for one. Um, the fact that I'm scared of hospitals anyway. The fact that it was so far away from home, like all the way in London. Just every, obviously the fact that I've, she's just told me I've got to start having chemotherapy. I didn't know what it, what it was going to entail. Like obviously everyone knows what it is, but you don't know what the side effects are going to be you don't know how your body's going to react you don't know if you're going to get better i was petrified oh, it was horrible 
yeah, it was honestly this very, 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 very scary time. So this was now the end of June, just to give you some time reference. Um, and so I went down to London and you had to stay in hospital for a week to make sure your body doesn't react bad to the chemo or that nothing goes wrong, um, just everything like that. So I stayed in hospital. My dad flew home from his holiday, which had only been there like a day. So I ruined his holiday. Um, and he was, I can't even tell you what. I can't even tell you how much or how grateful I am to like my dad for that week. He sat with me literally from eight in the morning, right through till ten on the night, because obviously you had to, it was I was on a women's ward thing, so he couldn't stay the night. He tried. Um but after that he slept in the car on the car park because in case I needed him because he knew how scared I was. <sighs> I'm like happy crying and thankful. But yeah. He literally sat with me all day and then was literally on the car park of the hospital for a week. Um just so I knew he was there. <laughs> So yeah, I can't tell you how thankful I am for that. And I would just never be able to repay him for like everything. <sighs> to be honest, to be honest, I would never be able to repay everyone who's helped me through this. But anyway, I'm trying to give you a timeline of my year and reflect on the year. So that week rolls around, I get sent back home with all the chemo and they transfer me like to a hospital by me and I start having the chemo they tell me give me a rough estimate that I'll be better in September so I was like I wish they didn't tell me that because I had that set in my head like just get through to September and I was crying my eyes out thinking oh my god I don't even want to do it till September obviously I haven't been able to work all year because of it so they had to sign me off work um, and September rolls around, I'm still not better, um, I just felt like it was never ever going to end to be honest with you, um, they kept telling me it was going and then coming back and then going and then coming back, not going sorry, it was like going down. Um, and getting better but then it was getting worse I don't know it was just not going as quick as they liked basically and I remember one day I walked into the hospital and the nurse was like I've been crying in the car the whole way to the hospital that day because I just felt like it was never going to end and I know she didn't know but I walked into the hospital and she was like you are the I've never had anyone that has what you have um that has been here for so long at this hospital and I just felt like oh I just felt like I'd been kicked in the face to be honest but it wasn't her fault she didn't know um so yeah anyway that the chemotherapy that I was having was working but not quick enough or fast enough we worked out that I'd probably be on it for like another year or something if I carried on so they said they gave me the option to go on to a stronger chemo and um, obviously with stronger side effects and I agreed um, because I was just sick of it I wanted it gone I wanted to stop going to the hospital five times a week um, so I agreed to that stronger chemo and boy was it stronger uh, I, the way I felt after the chemo the way I felt after that chemo well, after every single session was horrific. Uh, I actually would not wish that on my worst enemy. Going into them hospitals as well and seeing other people going through it, it is like a big eye-opener to 
knife to be honest and yeah it is a very very big eye opener um but rolling on so i've had this stronger chemo i don't want to see scar forever so it rolls on to the start of december which brings us to now ish well yeah now because it was last week and i had my last chemo on thursday just gone so literally a week today and boy was it a bad one can i tell you that i had to be taken back into hospital because i was so ill and spend the night in hospital but oh, i can't even tell you how glad i am it's all over i just feel like it's been the year from hell i haven't been able to work i haven't been able to save i haven't been able to plan anything go anywhere go on holidays go on trips away do anything for my birthday oh literally just horrific do youtube because i would wake up in the morning ready to film videos and i would be so ill or mentally the effect it's had on me mentally just it just has got me so down honestly i think it's probably one of the lowest i've felt mentally this year um because i don't know you just there's nothing to do either i'm just sat stuck in the house thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking about it so i have nothing to take my mind if i can't go to work and take my mind if i can't go on walks because i couldn't walk i couldn't i couldn't do anything to take my mind off it so i was literally stuck just thinking about it all day so mentally it's had the worst effect on me and now to say it's over it's just i'm so grateful i'm honestly so grateful for the hospitals and everyone all friends and family and everyone um and I am glad it's over, it sounds stupid, but before the new year so I can start next year afresh. I know that sounds like cliche and like new year, new me, but I feel like it is actually going to be a new year, new me because of the terrible year I've had this year. Um, yeah, one thing it has taught me is, I mean, you always do have to take lessons from things like this. Uh, I don't believe everything happens for a reason because why like I, who deserves to get ill I, I don't think anyone deserves it so when people say everything happens for a reason i hate that saying but uh, um i think you should take lessons from things and a humongous lesson i've taken from this is you literally don't know what's going to happen tomorrow like you do not know what is going to happen tomorrow you need to enjoy your life for now today you need to be thankful for everyone around you thankful for your health money means absolutely nothing because if someone handed me 10 million pounds when i was ill that would not have helped me because i wouldn't have got me better so literally you have to be so thankful for your health and health literally is wealth and honestly the biggest thing as well it's taught me is seeing other people obviously being on cancer wards and being in cancer hospitals and things like that really does make you realise how good you've got it and how thankful and grateful you should be for what you have. Like, I feel like I would never take my health and my family's health and everything I have for granted because I was opposite a woman and her kids were coming to visit her and she would cry herself to sleep every night because they didn't have her chemo wasn't working she was worried well obviously you know what would happen um and she had two young kids and after they'd leave she would cry and cry because she Obviously, she didn't want to leave her kids without her mum. I was on a young person's one, and there was, I think it was a young girl. I couldn't see her. Um, obviously, they had the curtain around her, and 
She was screaming. For them to stop and... For them to take the pain away and... Oh, honestly. It is probably the biggest eye-opener I've ever had is being on them wards and being in their hospitals when you see young children and their families coming to visit oh god it's horrible I mean I'm not really a person to worry about myself so I, I didn't look at myself in the same light because I don't know why I just never really worry about myself I never really care what happens to myself um or what I'm going through, I'd much rather me be going through it than someone else. But when I look at them, and when I saw them, it was actually indescribable. Oh, I just, honestly, it's the biggest eye opener seeing young people and their families go through that. So, yeah. At least I've learned the lesson of, to be honest, I was very grateful anyway, but it's just made me even more grateful for the little tiny things and I couldn't care less about money, I couldn't care less about anything, to be honest, other than friends and my family and being happy and living in the moment. Um, and obviously I'm very grateful for my health now. So, yeah. So yeah, anyway, rolling round now, it is obviously like I said, December and I'm just ready to celebrate this December, celebrate this Christmas and start a new year very, very fresh. I might make another video on, because this video is quite long already, on what I want to do next year and what I want to, plans and things like that. Um, so yeah. Sorry if this was a bit rambly, emotional and not a great video, but to be honest, I like to make these for myself as well to look back on. So yeah, thank you. If you have got this far, then well done you. Um, you deserve a pat on the back because to listen to me ramble for like over 25 minutes. Uh, but yeah, if you have got this far, then thank you like I say and but yeah but yeah anyway like I say thank you so 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 much for watching I hope and pray you all had a better year than I did um and I hope your Christmas and New Year is amazing and yeah if you can take anything from this video please 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 be grateful for what you have because there are people going through hell and I'm not talking about myself. I count myself lucky this year because it could have been so much worse. It could have been so much worse for me. I'm not talking about myself. I'm talking about other people I've seen um, going through even worse than what I've been through. So, yeah, please just be grateful and be respectful to people because you never know what they are going through. So, yeah, I will hopefully see you in my next video that will hopefully be very much which will hopefully be more upbeat. Uh, so yeah, bye. And today is like one of the best days of the year. Very bittersweet um, because although like I feel like I'm celebrating, celebrating, I don't want to celebrate what I've been through because it hasn't been the best, to be honest. Um. However, in my case, I am going to celebrate. Um, and if you don't know what I'm on about, so I have been having chemotherapy for the last seven months. And today is my last one. <laughs> oh, I'm literally, it felt like, I honestly just felt like, it was never, ever, ever, ever going to end. And... Oh, to
to think now that this is my last one. I remember literally crying when they first told me, telling me that how long it's probably going to be. And in fact, it's been double that time. And I remember thinking, no, I can't do this for this many months. And to think I've done it and I'm at the end. It's finally going to be all over. Literally makes me so happy. <sighs> So yeah, I'm currently stuffing my face with a big breakfast because I won't be able to eat. Although it is my last one and I'm happy. I'm still going to feel like horrendous for the next few days. But at least I can think in my mind that I won't have to do it again. Because one of the things that really, really got to me every time was thinking, oh my god. I've got to do these so many more times. I couldn't even count down because I didn't know how many. I just kept thinking, oh, I've got to have another one. I've got to have another one. So, yeah. And then even when it, like, you're better, you have to have three more. So, technically, I, I was, like, happy a couple of weeks ago. But this is my actual, actual last one. So, yeah. It's finally going to be all over after today. I mean, I'm still going to have to go to the hospital for, like, checkups and blood tests and everything like that. But, no more chemo, which is the thing that, which was obviously the worst part of it all. So, yeah. I'm just going to vlog my day. I'll bring it to the hospital. You can kind of see the aftermath of it. And, yeah. I'm just going to finish my breakfast now. Then I'll get ready to go. I was actually meant to get up at 9 o'clock and film a YouTube video. But I'm not going to put any pressure on myself today. It's just going to be a day where it's me and I think of myself. And yeah, so I had a lot in. It is currently 5 to 11. I've got to be at the hospital at 12. So I actually need to get a move in to be fair. Uh, yeah. Hold it. Um... Just quickly as well, in case anyone was wondering what I've been going through and things like that, um, I kind of just don't want to talk about it because that's what I've done for the whole year and that's what works for me. I just go to the hospital and I come home and I just block it out. I don't talk about my appointments, I don't talk about what happened, I don't talk about what's going to happen. I just block it all out basically so that is the reason why i haven't been talking about it and that's the reason why i'm probably still not going to talk about it just yet maybe in the future when it's all over completely and i don't have to really deal with it anymore um i will talk about it then but for now i'm just not ready to talk about it fully in detail but obviously i'm sure you can all imagine what it's like to have chemotherapy, what it means to have chemotherapy and everything like that. So, yeah. And if you're wondering why I haven't lost my hair, because that's a lot of people wonder that. <coughs> Not everyone loses their hair. It depends on the type of chemotherapy you have. It dep depends on how strong it is, how often you have it, how your body reacts personally and everything like that. So if you're wondering that, that is why, but a lot of people uh, don't like to ask because it can come across as rude. But, yeah, if you're wondering that, why I haven't lost my hair, that is why. I was also worried I was going to. But, you know, it's a very, very, very small... I know I can say this because I can keep my hair, but when I thought I was going to... It's a very, very small price to pay for your health. And it just makes you realise so much how irrelevant things like that are, to be honest with you. Um... So, I've just got out of hospital now. I was planning on um, filming in there. However, I mean, it just never goes smoothly for me, does it? I've had the worst treatment, I'd say, today. Oh, it was horrible. I had a funny turn when she put my cannula in and before I have chemo I had to have this tablet and 
I was almost sick but obviously if you're sick then you sit back up the tablet and so I was trying to hold in my sick and I was oh so then that's put me on this drip thing which made me really dizzy because it was really strong honestly oh I just cried the whole time I wanted it to be happy and well as happy as it could be Want it to be celebrating and I honestly feel horrendous. Sorry if you can hear the rain. But yeah, it's over now anyway. I think I go home and not have to do that ever again, hopefully. This is where they put it. Oh look one sec. They put it in my arm there. So yeah, although it was a horrible experience, it's over now and I'm on my way back home. I still feel terrible. I feel, normally it takes a while to kick in and I'll feel fine until later tonight or in the night. But I just feel horrendous already. I feel sick. Because you're the horribly taste in your mouth. And I just want to go to bed. So, we will see how this vlog goes. I will try and vlog later because I do want it to be like a reality um, I don't care if I look a mess and things like that to be honest but yeah sorry I couldn't vlog in there but it's just I would have had the worst time in the world um, but yeah I'm on my way home now oh, just glad it's all over 